Hi, and welcome to Christ the Servant King, CSK Hampton, for this week's 10 a.m. Sunday Shorts. Whether you're joining us for the very first time, or you've been joining us for a very long time, or anything in between, we want to warmly welcome you today. I'm Joel, and I'm Pioneer Curate at CSK. And later we'll be hearing from Rachel, our Pioneer Associate Minister, who will be preaching to us from Psalm 46. First of all, though, I have some really good news I'd like to share with you all. We welcome our new youngest member of the CSK family, Rhea Florence Paley, born to Kerry and Luke last Friday. Congratulations to them and to big sister Ava. Shall we give thanks to God? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for this wonderful new life and for the birth of Rhea. We pray that she will continue to grow and become strong. And we pray for Kerry and Luke, that they will have the patience and strength that they need to provide and nurture um, Rhea in her early days in particular. And we pray that as she does grow, that she will also grow in knowledge and love of Jesus Christ. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Well, our reading for today contains these words in the NIV. It says, Be still and know that I am God. This morning we're taking time out from our week to remember who God is and to praise him for it. So let's begin this service then on a big note of praise to God. So will you join with me in these opening words? Praise the name of the Lord. Ascribe greatness to our God. Lord, open our lips and we shall praise your name. So let's do that right now and praise the name of our God in song together, singing at your name. Shout your name, shout your name 
Welcome to CSK Voices and who do we have this morning? Hello, my name is David Kinder and I'm married to Sylvia Kinder. So David, would you like to tell everyone what your role is? I'm the Managing Chaplain at Her Majesty's Prison Little Hay, which is about 20 miles south of Peterborough. So David, can you tell everyone what life's been like at Little Hay in recent weeks and months? Like everybody else, life has changed dramatically with the onset of the Covid pandemic. When the Prime Minister announced lockdown at the prison, we literally went into lockdown. Um, the prisoners were locked up behind their doors for between 23 and 23 and a half hours per day. Difficult times. Early on in, in the cr crisis, we had three guys went out to the local hospital with underlying medical conditions. Unfortunately, they contracted COVID and died. The... Um, National Health were quite concerned with uh, prisons, quite naturally, because somewhere like Little Hay, we have a large number of people all living close together. And if COVID had got into the prison, then we would have flooded the local hospitals with, with COVID cases. And of course, at the early stage of the pandemic, that would have had very serious implications to the hospitals. So we had to be very careful about the way we operated and the, uh, the way we enforced the restrictions that we put in place. But as well as that, the, um, we have a number of volunteers uh, who used to come into the prison and that they weren't allowed to come into prison because of the lockdown. For I asked them to pray and pray for the prison, prisoners, for the staff as well. And they did that. And what we saw is the number of symptomatic cases within the prison dropped dramatically very early on, down to zero, and has remained at zero ever since. And people have been talking about a miracle. And I believe we've seen a miracle, Little Hay, because the people prayed and God acted. And we've seen the number of cases drop down to zero. In fact, a few weeks ago, most of the prisoners and staff were all tested and every single test came back negative for COVID. I believe we've seen a miracle. Excellent news. So how can we pray now for you and the prison, David? Uh, pray that God will continue to watch over everybody, the prisoners and staff at the prison, that we won't see an outbreak. And also, they've been locked up for a long time, for the, so their gentle mental well-being is also a concern. So you can pray for that, please and also for the leadership team as we start to ease the restrictions that they make wise decisions. Okay, shall we pray now? Lord God, we thank you for that miracle of little hay. We thank you for your protecting hand. And Lord, we do ask for wisdom and discernment for all the governments and uh, governors and leaders in the prison, Lord, as restrictions ease and visitors are allowed back in. We pray, Lord, that you would guide and you would lead. And also we do pray for the mental well-being of all the prisoners, Lord. Lord, may you be the light in their darkness and help each and every one at this time. And Lord, I do pray for David and the chaplaincy team that you continue to guide and lead them as they minister there. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Our Bible reading today is Psalm 46, read from the Message Bible. God is a safe place to hide, ready to help when we need him. We stand fearless at the cliff edge of doom, courageous in sea storm and earthquake, before the rush and roar of oceans, the tremors that shift mountains. Jacob, wrestling God, fights for us. God of our angel armies protects us. River fountains splash joy, cooling God's city. This sacred haunt of the Most High God lives here. The streets are safe. God at your service from crack of dawn. Godless nations rant and rave. Kings and kingdoms threaten. But earth does anything, he says. Jacob, wrestling God, fights for us. God of angel armies protects us. Attention all. See the marvels of God. He plants flowers and trees over the earth, bans war from pole to pole, breaks all the weapons across his knee. Step out of the traffic, take a long loving look at me, your high God, above politics, above everything. Jacob wrestling God fights for us. God of angel armies protects us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Christine, and for reading it in the message for us. I hope that for you, as for me, it's brought images to your mind that even if you knew the words of this psalm so well, have brought new life to it. Who doesn't want a river fountain splashing joy, cooling God's city? It's a stunning image. And there's something in there that could be for everyone this morning. So you need that stronghold in that place against fear, against anxiety, as Yuzhu was talking about last week. Do you need that joy? Do you need that reminder that this provides that he is the Lord of all creation? Or are you rather more like me in the last bit? And you need that reminder to stop, step out of the traffic, take a long loving look at you, me, your high God, above politics, above everything. But we need that reminder that he is the one who breaks the weapons of war. He is the one that, whose name all kings must bow down. So whatever it is that stood out to you, I encourage you to spend your own time in this psalm, seeing what it is that makes you praise, because its category is a praise psalm. And it actually specifically belongs to a category of psalms that are Zion psalms or Jerusalem psalms. It's thanking God for the protection of that city. But obviously, as New Testament people, we stand on the other side of the earthly life, burial, resurrection of Jesus. And we know now where the Holy Spirit lives. And that's in the heart of every single believer. Not in one place, but in many places, because that's where crazily the Holy Spirit chooses to dwell. And if you don't know yet the Lord in that relationship, may I encourage you to start today. There is nothing else that I want to live for than the fact that the creator of the universe is closer than my own soul. And that is what I believe life is about. So often we get asked as clergy, well, what's the point of living this way when I don't seem to see the difference in the life of Christians? And it's such an upsetting question because Jesus is worth every single moment, not only for beholding his glory, but because of what he did. He doesn't then just want us to sit passive or even turn up every Sunday, which is great if you do at the time when we could. He wants every single moment to be walked with us. And did you hear the refrain in this? Jacob wrestling God fights before us. God of angel armies protects us. Again, that's so strange, but so powerful. We have a God that we want to wrestle with and he wants to wrestle with us. And we have a supernatural God. We don't think we talk about angels enough, but they are there, part of God's mission, ministering to us, which I don't understand. But as long as we serve the Lord, they serve us. So this is the kind of God that we're coming to in praise. But the message or the question I want to ask today is, does this seem so far removed for you? You might think that heaven can be like this, but life at the moment, especially maybe now in 2020, does not look like this. And you begin to despair and you think, well, I've got it in heaven, but I don't have it now. 
And yes, there is a certain extent to which we see in a glass darkly. We don't get the full picture because heaven is Jesus 365 days a year if they have years and 360 degree views if they have degrees. And th that's why it's amazing. Not because it's heaven, but because Jesus is there. But yeah, Jesus is equally present here by his spirit. So let's look at how we can live this kind of psalm life of praise, even in the midst of crisis today. Let's pray. Lord, I am so, so aware that words without you are just words, but with you blowing through them, they are life and fruit. So would you bring the fruit of changed lives today? And would you go deep? Amen. If we're feeling like we're on the cliff edge of doom, but haven't found the stronghold, if we feel that we don't have that joy, if we feel that we're at the stage where the godless nations are ranting and raving, but where is God? When are we going to see it? It must be reserved for heaven. And I want to say no. Some bits perhaps, but there is a real tangible life with the spirit that changes things that you can live. And I want to share two stories. It starts in politics, the first one, but don't panic because it's actually about Jesus. I don't suppose many of you will be surprised if you know me to learn that I was absolutely devastated by the result of the 2016 referendum on Europe. And I think it has come to me even now in moments that I still feel upset about it. And I still don't know what none of us do, what the future will hold on it. But for me, I was born as a European citizen because of when I was born. I learned French and German at school. I went abroad as soon as I could and I was able to do an exchange programme. And then overnight, my citizenship of 27 other countries and the something bigger then our country and the idea of working in peace and harmony together was lost overnight. I struggled with that immensely. It felt like the loss of a limb. And I'm not speaking politically here. I'm just asking that whether you feel indifferent about it or whether you have a completely different view, you just understand and enter into the fact that I was devastated. And that remained the case, including up to the 31st of January this year when we officially left. Then I thought, well, I will pray overnight between the 31st of January and the 1st of February this year, as that was the transition date. And I can't remember if it was exactly midnight or whether it was a little bit after, but for the first time in four years of wrestling and crying and feeling like I am so, so lost in this, God spoke in a really clear way. And he said, your citizenship of my kingdom will never be revoked. And it hit me like a sledgehammer. All the years of worrying, striving, crying about it just seemed to be taken away in that thought. And I could have read it a million times in the written word, but it only came alive to me in that moment with a wrestling with God over it, just like in this passage. And although I know that I will still have many moments where I feel down about it and I still get confused by many of the decisions we might make as a country, I thank God so much that this is possible to see this moment of his kingdom just breaking in. And I'm not saying that my opinion is right. All I'm using this as an example for is the fact that when you can feel so lost in a situation, if you continue to wrestle with God, if you don't give up, if you talk to him all the time and you really bring him what's on your heart, then he enters into what matters to you. That you don't just say thanks when things are great or just pray to him when you're in need. Although, of course, we will do that and we need to do that. And that's a good thing to do. But like this passage, you really wrestle. He brings moments of the supernatural. Exactly what you need. Words for that time. That will change you. The other example is shorter. Don't panic. But it relates to the joy. And this is my only experience of it. But there was a time when I was far from God and I didn't know how to find my way back because I was so miserable about something that I couldn't restart. I just couldn't restart my prayer life in my own strength. And I was in the shower and I started laughing uncontrollably for like 20 minutes. I did stop the shower so otherwise I'd be wasting a lot of water. And I just couldn't stop. It was his joy. It was not merited by anything that I had done. It was because the situation of heaven was crashing into my reality and there is no way in which I could have had thoughts or anything I wasn't thinking anything holy at all and it just changed everything again and it brought me back to God in a moment because after that how could you not it was nothing that I did but he saw after me 
And that I kind of feel is a bit like the God of the Angel Armies protects us line. Is a supernatural God that we need to crash in. And I didn't ask for it. I mean, I had asked for it probably in many times in my life, but the prayers weren't answered immediately. But yet when God knew that I needed it, there he was in supernatural presence, changing things. It was that glimpse of heaven. And I pray that the rest of my life is dedicated towards living for more of those moments, just like we pray in the Lord's Prayer, more of your kingdom on heaven, on earth, here together, all as one. So if you are doubting this morning that you'll ever see any of the things mentioned in this praise psalm, this side of heaven, let me encourage you to not give up, to keep pressing in, because you will find the Lord of life. And it may not be instantaneous, he is a God that demands it all, but you will find him. You know, the Bible teaches us to ask and to seek and to find, and a lot of us ask, seeking takes a lot longer, and finding takes longer than that wrestle with that God and you will find the God of armies with you. Let's pray. Lord I pray for anyone who feels like this this morning just so far from a reality of praise. Would you crash in on them? Would you give them the courage to keep going in their prayer life when they feel like they don't know where to start or they don't know how they can continue with the grief that they hold? Lord would you be so real that they do glimpse heaven on earth. And may you get all the praise from it, I pray. Amen. So let's sing that song. It includes the line, God of angel armies, because we know who it is that fights for us in this world right now.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, creator of all things, we humbly come to you today in prayer as your children because of Christ. Firstly, let us confess our sins and wrongdoings from the past week where we have let you down and not acted as a child of God. We are sorry and we confess now to you in the silence of our hearts. O Lord, our refuge and strength, may we run to you first whenever we are in need. Our God who knows what we need before we even ask for it. May we seek your wisdom first, not the wisdom of the world when we are in trouble. May we find rest in your strength when our weary bodies fail us. We pray for all children and teachers as they prepare to return to school in September for the new school year. We pray especially for those who are nervous and a little scared about going back to school in these very different times. Help them to remember every day that the Lord Almighty is with us. May they give their worries to him who is our fortress, where we may seek safety and perfect peace. Keep them safe from harm and worry and still the hearts of parents who are anxious at this time. Therefore, we will not fear the Lord Almighty is with us. In these difficult times, we pray for individual peace as we watch with sadness the daily news, which shows us we live in a very broken world. Children and families displaced from destroyed homes seeking a new home and refuge. Houses being bombed in Gaza and illness affecting both young and old. Remind us that this world is far from your original plan of Eden and despite the brokenness, you are still with us, providing all we need. May we set our minds on things above and not on earthly things. Remind us that there is hope. There is a river whose streams may glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. Remind us of your love for us, for even when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And remind us that we are enough, because you take all broken things and make them new. We now commit this coming week to you. When we are worried, remind us to be still and know that I am God. When we face confrontation and difficulties at home or at work, remind us to be still and know that I am God. When we are sad, angry or lonely, remind us to be still and know that I am God. When the evil one puts doubts of your power and your authority in our minds, remind us, be still and know that I am God. Because you will be exalted among the nations, exalted in the earth, the Lord Almighty is with us. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
today praising our God, who is mighty and powerful, yet we can know his presence with each and every one of us, protecting, defending and helping us. So in light of these wonderful truths, will you pray these words with me now on the screen? In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let me pray for us as we finish this service. Heavenly Father, I pray that each and every one of us may be filled with praise today at who you are and at what you've done for us. As we carry on into another week, may we be aware of your presence with us, protecting us, and may we live without fear as your people. Amen. Well, that's all for our Sunday short this morning, but the fun doesn't end there. There is a children and family slot from Joy at 10.30am on our YouTube channel. And there will be a video for our youth from Toby on Insta Live at 11. Finally, another reminder to send us your summer photos if you haven't already. And please do that by the end of Tuesday at the latest. You can see yourself on screen and see what others have been up to. Well, I hope you felt blessed as you worship with us this morning. And until next time, God bless.